At about 1.3 billion cubic kilometers, the oceans are our biggest ecosystem. The oxygen in one out of every two breaths you take in this room come from microscopic algae in the surface layers of the ocean. The ocean also provides other obvious services such as food and less obvious ones such as carbon sequestration. About half of the oceans by area are what we call the high seas. It's a global commons. Mare liberum, or freedom of the seas, means that fishing and cargo vessels have the freedom to move wherever they want across the oceans. Marine life also moves wherever it wants. It ignores the lines that we draw on maps. As the demand for resources is increasing, we're turning to the oceans more and more for things like pharmaceuticals, minerals and energy. This is a piece of copper ore from a deep sea hydrothermal vent in the Antarctic from a depth of 2,000 metres. Blue growth is really on the agenda. Wherever I go in the oceans, I see impacts from humankind. Whether it's impacts from fishing, plastics or other forms of pollution, uh, we see it everywhere. This is a fisherman's glove on a sea mount 1,500 miles from land at a depth of 700 metres. And this is happening against the background of global climate change, which is causing warming, acidification and deoxygenation of the oceans, destroying sensitive ecosystems like coral reefs through phenomena such as mass coral bleaching, which you can see here in this slide. The way that we actually manage the oceans is through something called the UN Convention on Law of the Sea and other uh, international agreements. These are enabled by UN agencies, but actually implemented through states, through things like regional fisheries management organisations. These organisations are charged with managing fish stocks on the high seas, like tuna that you see here. Something like two thirds of tuna stocks are actually overexploited, and this really brings to mind the, the clash between profit for the few versus things like food security uh, for the majority. So this really brings to mind some of the problems we have. Something like 20% of all the fish caught in the oceans are caught illegally. Here you can see the crew of an illegal fishing vessel actually painting out the name of the vessel and running up a new flag right under the nose of the Australian Navy. That a simple ruse like this can prevent the vessel from being arrested shows how weak the governance is. But technology is improving our ability to deal with things like <coughs> illegal fishing. Synthetic aperture radar on satellites enables us to see fishing vessels wherever they are on Earth and to actually tell us what they're doing. So whether they're fishing or transshipping fish. New technology is also enabling us to exploit new resources in the oceans. This is a deep sea mining machine being built in the UK to exploit hydrothermal minerals from a depth of 1,600 metres off Papua New Guinea. New technology is also enabling us to explore the oceans in ways we haven't been able to. So at a depth of 4,000 metres, we've only actually visited about 0.00001% of the oceans. The new technology, such as the robot I used to take this photograph, really enables us to get at all of these places. And we're learning new things about the way in which life actually structures marine ecosystems. The diving activity of toothed whales, for example, stirs the oceans with the equivalent effect of the whole of the Hawaiian island chain. And this brings nutrients up to the water surface, stimulating primary production. This technology enabled us to find these hydrothermal vents in 2010, the first found in the Antarctic. And the description of the biological communities around these changed our ideas about how these communities were organised globally. Simply put, the more we know about the oceans, the better we can manage it. We are making progress. This is an illegal tuna fishing vessel that uh, was plundering the waters of Liberia and an NGO-sponsored project called Fish Eye Africa actually helped African states to get together and bring this vessel to book. Over-exploitation of the ocean's resources directly impacts people. It affects their food security, it affects their livelihoods. 
We're seeing increased capacity to exploit the oceans, but also to manage it as well. So we've got to ask how we move the oceans from decline to recovery. And we have to do this at both the international level, think about things like new implementing agreements for the UN Convention on the Law of the Seas, but also even on the level of what we do ourselves as individuals.